The deserts of the southwestern United States have many interesting and unique birds, but of all the special desert birds, Phanopeplus are my favorite. In this video, I will tell you why I love Phanopeplus, including that Phanopeplus are the only regular U.S. representatives of a unique bird family. They have a simple but beautiful plumage that I'll show and describe. They have a pleasant mellow song and call that I'll share with you. Also, Phanopeplus have an interesting food source that few other birds eat. They can be quite confiding and easy to see and photograph. And, as breeding birds, Phanopeplus act like two different species. Phanopeplus are one of four species of silky flycatchers. This bird family lives in dry, brushy areas of the Western Hemisphere. They resemble waxwings. They have soft, silky plumage, tall crests, and eat berries and insects. Silky flycatchers have bristles around the bill, unlike waxwings. Other names for the Phanopepla are black flycatcher, black crested flycatcher, shining crested flycatcher, and even black cardinal. While both birds have crests and long tails, the red northern cardinals are seed eaters with thick bills and not similar to Phanopeplas other than both being songbirds. The name Phanopepla means shining robe. Male Phanopeplas have glossy black feathers. There are two different subspecies of Phanopepla. One population is found in southwestern Texas and eastern Mexico. It averages slightly larger than the western population, but is otherwise the same. The western population ranges from California to southwest New Mexico and south through western Mexico. Phanopeplas have an elevational migration from low deserts in winter and spring to foothill woodlands in summer and fall. Some birds may also migrate south in the winter, returning in April, but at least some birds remain all year throughout their range. Phanopeplas nest in both low deserts and higher oak foothills. I'll discuss this more when we talk about their diet. Phanopeplas are about seven and a half inches long, bill tip to tail tip. They are slender with long tail and tall crest. They have short, rounded wings in flight. Their bill is short. They have striking red eyes. Male Phanopeplas are sleek and glossy black. In flight, they show bold white wing patches at the base of their primaries. Females are ash gray with crisp white wing and tail feather edges. Both birds appear as if they're dressed up for an elegant ball. I'm not the only one to find this bird elegant. In 1904, Bradford Torrey saw his first Phanopeplas, and here's what he wrote. The Phanopeplas elegance comes partly from its form, which is the very perfection of shapeliness, having in the highest degree that elusive quality designated as style partly from its motions, all prettily conscious and in a pleasing sense affected, like the movements of a dancing master, and partly from its color, which is black with the most exquisite bluish sheen set off in the finest manner by broad wing patches of white. Phenopeplas sing, but not loudly. They give a well-spaced, soft warble of both musical and grating notes. It is somewhat like the rambling, squeaky song of a starling. They also give both harsh notes and squeaking notes. One call is a rough purring trill. They are said to sometimes imitate other birds' calls. A call that gives away their identity, however, is a louder whistled whirp. With practice, you can whistle an imitation of this call. As their family name suggests, these silky flycatchers catch insects on the wing in summer. However, phenopeplas rely almost exclusively on dwarf mistletoe berries for their winter food supply. They are almost always found near mistletoe, either in oaks or mesquite. Mistletoe spreads from branch to branch and tree to tree, in part through the excrement of birds such as phanopeplas. Other birds also eat these berries, including robins, bluebirds, waxwings, and doves. But don't you try it. Mistletoe berries are poisonous to humans. Phanopeplas in the desert in winter are solitary birds, both males and females set up their own winter feeding territory to defend a supply of mistletoe berries. Phanopeplas defend trees with mistletoe against others of their kind. They also interact with northern mockingbirds, which also set up winter territories for a supply of mistletoe berries. However, it appears that the mockingbird seems to be the aggressor 
in persecuting the phenopepla. In summer breeding areas above the desert, phenopeplas are more social and are often seen in groups. Especially in winter, you will see birds perched up on the top of small desert trees, often right along the road. This behavior makes these birds easy to find. And they are not easily spooked. They are usually easy to approach, to view, and photograph. No wonder I have so many photos and videos of these birds. Are there really more males than females? It often seems so. Others have commented on this, but no one seems to really know. In flight, phenopeplas are rather easy to identify. It's not just the white wing patches of the males. Rather, both genders fly with slow, buoyant flight on rounded wings with deep wing strokes. They have a twisting or meandering flight with irregular wing beats. Usually, they fly low, just over the tops of the desert trees. But in spring, pairs may chase high into the air. Quick fact, nests are built exclusively by the male phenopepla. Here's an interesting puzzle that no one has solved yet. Birds in the desert nest in March and April. Birds in the oak-covered coastal slope of Southern California nest in May and June. It's almost like there are two different populations, desert spring breeders and oak woodland summer breeders. However, phenopeplas do disappear from the deserts in summer, so rather than two populations, some people wonder whether the same individuals that nest in spring in the desert may also be the same individuals to nest again in summer in the oaks at higher elevations. However, no one seems to have studied this to find out. Two populations or the same birds breeding in different habitats in the same nesting season. It's an interesting puzzle. For a far different bird, click on this video to watch a green heron hunting along a pond's edge.